One of my favorite mathematical concepts is the Pythagorean Theorem. I don't know why, I just really enjoy using the Pythagorean Theorem to solve different problems, and so that's what we're going to do right here. The problem asks us to calculate the missing side length of the right triangle. And first off, you'll notice that this is a right triangle. There's that little square drawn in the corner right there telling us that that's the right angle. It's a 90 degree angle. So we have the two sides that uh, meet at that right angle are both the legs. The side opposite of that right angle is our hypotenuse. And in this case, it's the hypotenuse that we don't know the length of. There are you know, more, there's more than one way to think about the Pythagorean Theorem. I'm going to show you two ways to solve this using the Pythagorean Theorem. One is thinking about it in a more geometric way, and one is going to be uh, using the formula, a more algebraic way, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But let's start with a more geometric way of solving this one. What does the Pythagorean Theorem actually say? It says that the squares of the legs uh, add up to the square of the hypotenuse. So let's do that. Let's take this leg and draw a square that has this leg of the triangle as one of the side lengths of the square. Let's draw another square with this leg as being the side length. So I have the square drawn of this leg, the square drawn based on this leg, and now let's draw the square of the hypotenuse, and I can connect it like that. So now I have squares drawn on all three sides of this right triangle. And the Pythagorean theorem says that this, the area of this square plus the area of this square must add up to the square of the hypotenuse. So what are the areas of these squares? Well, if this side length is 3, this side length must also be 3. So the area of this square, length times width, or in a square it's length times length, because they're always the same, but 3 times 3 gives this square an area of 9. How about the area of this square? Well, if the side length here is 4, the side length there must also be 4. So the area of this square is 4 times 4, which is 16. The Pythagorean theorem now says that the area of this square plus the area of this square must equal the area of this square. So 16 plus 9 equals 25. 16 plus 9 equals 25. So we know the area of this square is 25, but we're not done yet. That's not where we'll stop. We don't want to know the area of this square, we want to know the side length of the square. So to get the side length of the square, anytime you know the area of a square, to get the side length, you simply take the square root of that area, and that's going to be the side length. And in some cases, the square root of that number, in many cases, the square root of a number ends up being a decimal that goes on forever and ever. So it's often best to just leave it with the square root symbol. There are some nice numbers, though, where you take the square root and you get a nice, exact whole number. And if so, you should write that whole number. And this is one of those numbers. The square root of 25 is just simply 5. So in a right triangle, if the lengths of the legs are 3 and 4, the length of the hypotenuse must be 5. I said that there was another way of doing it. Almost everybody remembers from middle or high school the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we can think of it more algebraically. We can forget about drawing squares and finding areas and things like that if you don't want to. You can just use this formula and just plug numbers straight into that thing if you would like. A and B are the lengths of legs. C is the length of the hypotenuse. So the lengths of the legs are 3 and 4. So I'm going to put 3 in for A. I will put 4 in for B. We don't know C yet. 
3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. I just put the lengths of the legs in for a and b. Let's do those. What is 3 squared? That is 9. 4 squared is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 3 is 9 equals c squared. What's 9 plus 16? Well, that's equal to 25 equals c squared. And if c times c equals 25, then c all by itself must be the square root of 25, which is just simply 5. So c must equal 5, which is exactly the same answer that we got up here when we were trying to solve it using the more geometric way. The algebraic way, just plugging numbers into that formula, gave us the same answer. Some people much prefer just plugging numbers into the formula. Other people feel a little more comfortable with the geometric representation. They like seeing the pictures, finding the area, adding those areas up. It kind of leads them to the solution a little easier, and people get a little bit lost sometimes plugging numbers into the formula, at least when they're starting. Eventually, you'll get to the point where maybe where you get tired of drawing the squares and triangles and adding areas and stuff, and you might want to just plug numbers right into the formula and be done with it. I'd like to show you one more. It's going to be a little different than this one. In this one, the hypotenuse length was missing. In the next problem here, we know the hypotenuse length is 7. It's opposite this right angle. This leg has a length of 5. It's this other leg that is missing. That's what we are going to try to solve for. So we're going to go through the same process. I'm going to do this the geometric way to start out. Let's draw a square based on that leg. Square based on that leg. That's kind of an ugly square. It looks like more like a rectangle, but it'll work well enough for our purposes. Let me draw a square based on the hypotenuse. And now let's start finding some of these areas. If the length of this square, the side length is 5, the side length here must also be 5, meaning the area of this would be 5 times 5 is 25. Well, the side length here of this leg is unknown, so we don't know the area yet. The side length of this square is 7, so all of the side length of that square must be 7. The area of this square must be 7 times 7 is 49. A common error that people often make is they just will go right into the Pythagorean theorem saying this square plus this square equals this square. But remember, it's the square of the legs added together equals the hypotenuse square. So really what we want to do here is 25 plus what equals 49? 25 plus what equals 49? The area of this square plus this unknown area of this square equals 49. Well what does this square have to be? The area of this square has to be, there's only one possible number this could be, it has to be 24. 25 plus 24 equals 49, so the area here must be 24. If the area is 24, what's the side length? The side length is just simply the square root of that area, the square root of 24, and is 24 one of those numbers where you can take the square root and get a nice uh, whole number from that? It is not. It's a decimal that repeats forever. So I'm just going to leave my answer right here as the square root of 24. You could use your calculator if you want and you could get a decimal approximation uh, and that would be fine. It would be a little bit less than 5. Um, but I'm going to leave it as the square root of 24 because that is our exact answer. That's the exact value. So the missing length here must have exactly the square root of 24. So be careful. Make sure you identify what side of the triangle is missing. Here it was a leg that's missing. In my first example it was the length of the hypotenuse that was missing.